Hi, welcome to another Solo Sunday. I'm Jessica with Pencil First Games, and today we're taking a look at the Whatnot Cabinet, which we will see. There's the nice cover right there. I'm a little early, so we're gonna kind of slowly let everybody get in here before continuing on. Um, I apologize, it is about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is sweltering. <laughs> so for whatever reason, I'm getting a little bit of lag with one of the cameras. So we'll see what happens. Um, I will just go nice and slowly. And we're just going to be taking a nice relaxing stroll through the outdoors, kind of collecting these different tiles that are out here. Um, and I'm just going to wait a couple minutes and just talk a little bit <laughs> um, because we just started. And I want to give everybody a chance to Join us, settle in. If you have a copy, feel free to set up yours and play along. We are going to be playing solo, learning how to play, seeing some great strategies and probably some not so great strategies because that's how I play. <laughs> the whole idea here, though, is just to have fun. Um, so I have everything set up for the solo mode. We're going to be ready to get going there in a few minutes. I also have a collection of random whatnots from my own collection that we can take a look at and potentially laugh at because who doesn't want to laugh at random objects? <laughs> Although I think the fun part about that was just looking for whatnots. Um, it's kind of fun to figure out what's in your collection and just remember the stories behind those items. Um, and those objects and just re remember I got this from so-and-so or I remember where I was when I got this. This was for a birthday and I still have it. Uh, little things like that. It's just kind of nice to have that collection um, that is unique to each person. So that's sort of <laughs> along the same lines of what the Whatnot Cabinet is. Um, this is more collecting things from nature, going out there and picking up, you know, leaves and shells and gems and bottles and all different types of interesting things that we can put on our shelf and show off. <laughs> I always joke that this cabinet reminds me of Calyx shelves a little bit, which are in the background here. So <laughs> my whatnots mostly consist of board games. What do you know? But yeah, so uh, let's see. We'll still let everybody get settled in here, get something to drink, some water. I should probably drink some water because it is hot today. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's fantastic because apparently the camera doesn't want to cooperate today. So what is going on with that? Here we go, fun with technology. So bear with me for just a moment, please, as we try to get this going and figure out why it doesn't want to cooperate. Hmm. Well, we're, we're gonna get there. <laughs> I did have some lovely techno technology issues, I should say, a little bit earlier. So let's see if we can get this working again. And you know, things always happen. So we don't want that to be there. Start getting this set up and figure out why. All right, we seem to be semi back now. So let me get this all settled again. If you're just joining, you know, there's always something fun to, uh, to consider. <laughs> and let's see if that is gonna be set up in the right spot. But let's hope so, right? And let us, well, we don't want to see my face. We want to see the game. All right, we're back in business. <laughs> Camera is not cooperating. Um, for anybody joining, just real quick, for some reason, I am getting extreme lag. I blame it on the temperature. Maybe my camera just knows that I'm going to play horribly. But, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> So we are a couple of minutes in here. We are taking a look at the Whatnot cabinet today. I have it all set up for solo. Here's that lovely box again. Again, this is by Steve Finn and Eduardo Baraf with artwork by Beth Sobel. Beautiful artwork. 
We're going to see that on all the different tiles that we're going to be putting in this lovely cabinet over here. And here we go with the lag again, like how I can, I know my hand's there, but my the camera's like, no, nothing's going on. <laughs> Technology woes. We're going to get through it and we're going to have fun. Um, worst case, I'm going to have to hold it up to the camera that is working. I'll make it work, though. This is how we go. <laughs> so let's see. So we are a little bit after our start time. Again, welcome to everybody who's stopping by. I think we're going to get started, though. Um, again, I'll go slowly and hope that the camera over here, my hands are there now. It's like a magic trick here. Now they are. Now they aren't. They're over here now. <laughs> Alrighty, so what is the whatnot cabinet, right? This is a really fun, quick sort of game where you're kind of going out there in nature. You're going to be going on this journey board where there are five different actions we're going to be able to choose from. And we are going to be taking tiles kind of down here, taking some of these. And let's see if we can kind of show these off if when the camera wants to uh, cooperate. We'll kind of get those up close so we can see what's going on. There we go. So you can see there's a couple of these have actions on them. Other ones are just really nice, beautiful tiles with, here we have a purple gem. We might find a little elephant, which is my favorite one in the game. Uh, there's shells, there's leaves, and they're all indicated kind of with ribbons at the top that tell us both the type and the color. So why do we care about that? <laughs> And the reason is kind of explained on our, this nice summary sheet that goes over the scoring conditions. So we are going to be looking to be creating our collection based on types of objects in rows and colors in columns. So what does that mean? <laughs> so basically, we're going to try to be getting different or the same going across and down. And we'll kind of see how that plays out. It's an interesting mechanic where you're trying to get the same sometimes, but that can get kind of risky over time. So we are going to see, once this camera catches up, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? And we have our rival opponent who's going to actually be blocking us on the board when this camera wants to actually work. This is the worst lag I've had. Okay, we're semi back. <laughs> We have a deck of rival cards over here, and what that's going to show us is what spaces are blocked that turn, and also what tiles might be removed from the outdoors. So it's going to kind of give us a reason to pick up certain tiles at a certain time, and then also be okay with <laughs> the rival clearing those out. We also have a wonder card, and what this does when it shows up, it'll, it'll come, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> this means that for every leaf in our cabinet at the end of the game, we're going to get an extra point for that. So leaves this turn, this play are going to be worth more. And then we also have five curiosity cards that we're going to set out. That's what's up at the top here. And these show us other scoring conditions that we want to potentially go for. So if we pick up one, take a look. This one is saying... I'll get one point if I can fill all the corners. And you might say, well, that's obvious because you're going to fill up the whole cabinet, right? Somewhat correct. So we are going to play through the first couple rounds. I'll show each turn you're picking up two tiles. So we're going to be getting four tiles every round. And at the end of each round, we're going to flip over two of these curiosity cards. And that means they're no longer available to us. So I have to try to figure out which ones make the most sense to go for and which ones I'm OK with letting go. Um, there's a couple that are worth one point. There's a few that are worth two points each. So that plays a little bit into it, but not a lot. Um, other ways that we're going to be scoring, I kind of went over how, you know, we're doing different objects or the same objects across. That's going to be worth one or three points. And it's kind of easier to see that in motion rather than just explaining it. So we'll see as we go. Um, there are also certain tiles like this lovely little four-leaf clover. Once it gets into view, it's it, it, it'll happen. It'll happen. 
I like how it freezes when it's just not quite there. There we go. You'll notice there's a little crown in the bottom right. And for every crown at the end of the game, we're going to earn one extra point for that tile. So those are worth a little bit more too. And if you'll notice, that one is also a leaf. So I'm pretty excited about that one <laughs> to start with. Um, but yeah, but the, the actions that we're going to be doing are all different. They all have to do, again, with picking up tiles. The first one, that one, I can draw three tiles from our nice tile bag over here. And I get to keep two, put them in my cabinet and discard one. The second one, I'm going to be drawing two tiles, taking one, putting the other one into the outdoors, and so on and so on. I think it makes the most sense for us to just kind of dive in and see how it works before we kind of you know, go over a big explanation. It's very quick, very fun. I love this. I still have to get much better at it though. <laughs> so let's hope that today is the day that things get better. So when we do this, I'm gonna be playing as the dark blue pawns and the solo opponent or the rival, I should say, is the orange pawns. They go first and third. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we can see the rival is gonna start off first. So what do we do? We're gonna take the top card and see what that rival does. So the rival position, that's telling me that they're gonna move their pawn to position one and the bottom is a disaster for me. <laughs> I'll show you why. So what's that gonna look like? They're gonna take their pawn and it's gonna go into position one, which means I can't take that action now. They've blocked it from me. And then that lovely rival is discarding all leaves the exact one I needed goes away. So we'll kind of have a discard off to the side here. And then at the end of the rival's turn, we are going to put out a new tile. Could it be a leaf that I need? That would be ideal. It's not, <laughs> but we can do something with this. Alrighty. So now I'm next. I get to choose from any of the actions where there's not a pawn already. So that gives me four different options. So what am I looking at? <laughs> and I should say out in the outdoors is this unique tile, which rather than going in your cabinet, you would pick that up and we would get to clear everything that's in the outdoors and put out four new tiles. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to get them out of there <laughs> if there's nothing that's good. However, I do see that there are two of these, what are these, rocks or gems? I never know what to call them. We'll call them gems and say that's good enough. <laughs> there are two of those. One has a crown, so I know that's worth an extra point. Hmm. And I could start going for a couple of, yeah. So I think I'm okay with what the outdoors has right now. I don't want to clear it out. I'm all right with it. <laughs> So the other unique thing here is wherever I go, once we finish this entire round, we're going to move that up and that's going to determine the order that myself and the rival go in next round. So I kind of want to go towards the start. Also in the solo mode, I know it might be a little difficult to excuse me, see, but if you end up going in spots one, two, or three, those are worth three, two, or one points respectively each round. So I think what I want to do is go to position two, which is right here. What that one does is it says draw two tiles. So I'm gonna shuffle these up and see what I can get. All right, I got two. Two in hand, what did we get? Oh, all right. And so here's our options here. And I have to take one and place the other in the outdoors. I definitely want this leaf. I'm gonna put it in a corner because that looks lovely. <laughs> and then this gets added to our outdoors. And then I choose one from the outdoors. So I could take that one that I just picked up, but I am thinking I'm gonna get this green one here. Why? It has a crown, but also it's green. And we wanna get all the same colors I should say all the same color, one color, <laughs> in a column in order to get four points. 
So I'm going to go with that. That is my turn. That's it. So let's go see what the rival does. Let's get their cards over here. So here's a good example. This one says they want to, if, if this wants to, there we go. Focus it up there. <laughs> they want to go to position two, but ha ha, joke's on you, I'm there. So what happens? You'll see on the far left, there's an arrow telling me to just start going left until I find an open space. So if I want to be position two, nope, position one is also taken. We wrap around the board. Whoa, whoa. I don't like the rival today, apparently. And we go right there. All right. And then discard all bottles. Do I have bottles? Oh, I do. This lovely one with the crown on it. Could have used that. That gets discarded. And then don't forget, because sometimes I need to remind myself <laughs> at the end of the rival's turn, we get one more added. Hmm. That is an interesting one. All righty. So now it's back to me. And my two options, I have options three or four open. So I can either add one tile to the outdoors and take two, or I can add two tiles to the outdoors and take two. The reason I'm thinking about this is because position three gives me one point just for being there, which is pretty nice. Uh, but let's take a look, see here. I'm not thrilled with what's out here. I could make do with those though. So I think I'm okay with going to position three. So again, what that does, we have to go in our bag that I just kind of tossed all over the place before. <laughs> Pick that up. We're gonna add, ooh, a nice bluebird with a crown on it to our outdoors, which is nice. But then which two do I want to pick up? Whoa, don't, don't knock my cabinet over here. <laughs> All right, so what I think, what I could do here is I could complete hmm, different object type in every row. I could do that. All right, I see how, what I could do. I'm looking at the curiosity cards again to see where can I get some points? <laughs> so I think what I want to do, I can, all right, so I don't have a shell, right? Okay, I'm going to take this blue shell. Look at that. I love this artwork. It's just so nice and pretty. I'm going to place that here. And then I am going to pick up this bird because I love my bird whatnots. <laughs> I'm going to put it here. So what have I just done? It's good, I think. <laughs> I have a leaf, a gem, a shell, and an animal. So that is this curiosity card, a different object type in each row. I'm going to claim that. Put it over here, I guess. Going to keep those on camera. And I definitely did not get that. Nope. Okay. That's where I am with that. And if we want to take a break for a real whatnot, <laughs> as I said, I like bird whatnots. So this is my little friend. You might see some of those in the background when I stream. They just hang over the edge, have some funny feet and legs. <laughs> um, I picked this up, uh, what was it, two years ago now, I think, two, maybe more, maybe three. I don't know, time has no meaning at this point. Um, but that was with my husband when we went on a wine tour. And I saw that and I said, you know what? I need it. I know I need it. So let me get it. And that's that lovely story. That thing's been hanging out and making me laugh ever since. But anyway, enough about the real whatnots. Let's get back to the important stuff. <laughs> so it's the end of the round here in the solo game. So what do I need to do? Biggest thing is I need to turn over two of these curiosity cards and they're no longer available to me. All right, so what can I do? If I get really lucky, I'd be able to do a row and a column. All right, so this one I don't want. This is telling me three, um, one row each of three different and three of the same object types. It's risky, but I don't, I'm going to say I'm not going to go for that. Look at that card back. Let's bring that up. Sometimes card backs don't get a lot of love. And there are some really nice ones out there. Look at that. Just beautiful. 
And if we want to just see what the a close up of the leaves on the solo, the rival deck, just so nice. It's a very nice and peaceful type of game. Filling in the corners. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's tricky. Completing a row in a column. Oh, five of the same color anywhere. That's not happening. Although watch, it might. <laughs> so we get those out of the way. And then this is a simple process of actually figuring out the turn order for the next round. We just move everybody up. Oh, I did forget. I get three total points for being in these two positions. So that's two from the second and one from the third. So let's just have our, where's our little collection? Mm. Let me have them over here for now. Actually, you're gonna have to move. Let's get you over here. That's mine. We'll get these down here. I'll show you why I'm kind of rearranging things a little bit um, once we start scoring cabinets. So anyway, let's get us back up here and we're done. On to the next round. And note that in the solo game, we are not actually wiping out any of the tiles. Um, those stay. So that's a big difference between the multiplayer and solo mode. It kind of introduces different strategies, which is fun. <laughs> but it is something to just keep in mind. So on to the next round. Rival is in position one, so they go first. Let's see, are you going to steal anything this time? So this is telling me that they're going to go into position four, which again blocks that from me. And they're going to discard all shells. And we're going to say, huh, joke's on you, rival. There's no shells. <laughs> so now it's my turn. Ooh, and it is, I'm in a good position here because like I said, this tile right here, if I pick that up, that actually clears everything from the outdoors and gives me four new tiles to choose from. So I almost want to make sure. <sighs> the tricky part is giving up those first couple of positions. That leaves those open to the rival. Don't steal my place out in the world. <laughs> hmm. All right, you know what? I think what we're gonna do, I think my best bet is position three. So here's, here's my, I'm gonna go right here. That is gonna add one tile to the outdoors and I get to choose two from the outdoors. So depending on what shows up, this may or may not be interesting. <laughs> All right, so a yellow butterfly has joined the mix. And I am okay with getting rid of that. So here's how this turn's gonna work. I am going to choose this, which immediately clears everything out from the outdoors. And in the process, that will get discarded. It technically gets discarded at the very end, but I'm getting it out of there just to be sure. And we're going to put four tiles out there. So we get a blue leaf. That is amazing. I need that. A yellow leaf. Not terrible because remember our wonder card tells us that that's worth another point. There's a green uh, this is glass jar container. Get your words, bottle. <laughs> Get your word right, Jessica. And, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So remember every turn I have to pick up two tiles though. So I'm not gonna end up with one, I'll end up with two here. I just took an, another action. I'm kind of chaining actions with that tile. So this one just came out, which is very interesting because what this does is I get to keep this off to the side. It doesn't go in my cabinet. I hang on to that. It's worth an extra point at the end of the game. And I blindly draw from the bag and have to put that in my cabinet, Oof. which is tricky but not bad. If you pick this up, um, you know, in the last round when you need maybe two to four tiles to complete your cabinet, you'll see how this gets very tense. I shouldn't say tense, it's the wrong word, but very tight sort of. You need those specific tiles to make these things happen. And when it happens, amazing. When it doesn't, it's kind of a laughing moment and you get, you know, one of the best <laughs> scoring tiles ever, this one, which tells you, no, this is not a good collection in this row or column. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to risk it because it's worth an extra point. So this hangs out with me. Um, I hang on to that for end of game scoring. 
and then I draw blindly from the bag and have to put this in my cabinet immediately. If it's the wrong one, well, it's the wrong one. <laughs> Alrighty, so what did we pick up? Okay, I'm excited. What is it? It is this awesome green turtle. Who's just amazing? Right there. I love turtles. As I was trying to get my whatnots today, I could not find them. But I recall receiving the old, old Littlest Pet Shop from the 90s. Um, the turtles were one of my very first ones that I got. I still remember that day. Wish I had brought them out for this. But anyway, this one has to go in here and it is perfect because it is going to go down here. So what is that turtle doing? It is starting to complete my row with animals and it's green. So this column just needs one more green in order to be complete. So I'm liking this. And then don't forget, I need to take one from the outdoors. So this was a long turn. Usually when I'm not talking, it goes very quickly. <laughs> but I am liking the leaves, of course. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So filling in the corners, I think I'm gonna ruin for myself here. But that's okay. So what I'm, I'm gonna take this lovely blue leaf, so nice. And I am gonna do the same thing, well, similar, I should say, to what I just did with the turtle it up here so that's completing my leaves or it's getting closer to completing my leaves and blue good times so far but we'll see what happens so back to the round tracker remember the round trackers on the top i get to go again and i am looking at this and saying hmm the yellow leaf is good but not great so do i want to get points or do i want to give myself more should I say opportunities? <laughs> I kind of like the last option because that's going to put four new ones out there. Mm. Decisions, decisions, right? Yeah. But I think I could make it with, okay. We're going to be a little risky here and go with option or action number two. So I get to draw two tiles take one and put the other one in the outdoors and take from the outdoors. So let's see, drawn two. What are we gonna get? <laughs> All right, well, that's interesting. Ooh, tricky choice. So I have to take one of these. The yellow bottle is not worth it to me unless I wanna start doing yellow. Oh, okay. It's getting riskier now to take this one because I have to place whatever I pick and put it in that whatnot cabinet. So I am gonna choose to take the yellow bottle. This is gonna ruin one of my perfect rows, <laughs> but sometimes you can't go for perfect. Um, a couple of points or even one point is better than none. So I am going to put this in what? I'm gonna go put it here. So I'm still gonna try to get different ones there. And then I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm going for it. I'm going for all of the same color in all of these columns. And I wanna take this yellow leaf and yellow leaf is gonna go up here, which is nice. And that has completed a row. So when you're scoring a row or column, once it gets completed, you take a look at it and rows are looking for object types. We don't care about colors. So I could have had two green, or even three green, and that wouldn't matter, it's the types. So I have leaf, 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 which is three of the same. Kind of look at our scoring chart here, and that's gonna be three points. So I take one of these nice threes, toss it up here, and that marks not just points for endgame, but also tells me you scored this, you're done, you don't have to worry about this. <laughs> I did not get any more curiosity cards this round, and I know the rival has to go again. I'm just talking on here. Um, but yeah, so I missed out on some more curiosity cards, but maybe I'm gonna get some good points here. We will see. Alrighty, so rival gets to go. And let's see, so what are they doing? They're gonna go to position two, which is taken, but again, this tells me 
Then if they can't go in position two, they're going to go to the left, which unfortunately means they're going to go first next round. Fine, I can handle it. <laughs> and then discard all yellow objects. Our outdoors is currently just these two tiles, so nothing there. But at the end of each rival's turn, we put a new tile out. Is it something I could use? No, no. <laughs> we do not want red. No, thank you. All right. So that is the end of the round again. So I'm going to have to flip over two curiosity cards. And of course, that means no more. I still got one. So I'm not, you know, not too upset about that. <laughs> got something. And then I ended up in positions two and three again. So again, it's a little tricky. Sorry if it's a little hard to see, but that's worth two points and one point just for being there. So I take another three pointer, which we're going to kind of stack down over here. Again, I don't want to confuse that with completing my rows and columns because those are different points. All right. And then boop, 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 slide everybody up. And this is going to be it. We're going to play through this and that's the end of the game. So let's take a look at what's going to happen. Rival is going to go first. What are they doing? All right. So they're going to take position one. Fine. And they're discarding all blue objects. Once again, no effect. No blue objects there. And we're going to add one at the end of the rival's turn. Give me something I can use. It's a nice leaf, but it's not one I could use. And also remember, as soon as you put something in your cabinet, you cannot move it. So I can't swap anything out. I can't decide, oh, this would look better there. You're locked in. I like to imagine these as very heavy objects or art that does not get changed. <laughs> you leave it. This is how it's supposed to look. All righty. So I am up next. We can see in the round tracker. I get to go again twice. All right. I, hmm. All right, so this could actually be, no, it cannot, Never mind. I missed that this is also a bottle. So if I, if I ended up choosing this, just, I'm not, but, but if I did, if I put it here, yes, that gives me four green in that column. So that's four points, but then I'm gonna end up with two bottles in this row in a shell, which is worth nothing, nothing. <laughs> so I really don't wanna do that. I don't want to risk it with this one where I just blind, blindly draw and put it out there. Hmm. It's tricky, but I think even though it's not worth points, I'm going to go here to the end. We're going to clear out, sweep them away from the outdoors, and then refill with four new. Give me something good. Oh, no. A purple bottle. Nope. That's not what I need. <laughs> Blue bird, I can, there's a way for me to use that. A yellow leaf, also a way for me to use that. Okay, actually, those two I could make work. And a red bottle, definitely no. Okay, <laughs> so there are only two choices here that actually make sense for me. I'm not going to be able to maximize points, but at the same time, technically I need to take these one at a time. Let's slow it down and think through what I'm doing. I want this lovely blue bird. I'm going to place it here. Why? Show you in a second. We're going to score everything at the end here, but that is a maximized column. I am happy with that one. But then I'll do that in a second. I'm also going to take this yellow leaf because again, don't forget that wonder card. Leaves are worth an extra one point. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to say, all right, you kind of look like you're in a good position, but I'm kind of not because I go next. <laughs> so I almost have to hope for perfect draws, but that's all right. I am risking it and going for it. This is my fantastic whatnot cabinet. So let's make sure we score everything before moving on. So I scored this column. You can see there's four blues. So that is a beautiful four points going across this row also scored but i have a gem an animal and a leaf all different so not a lot it's still worth a point though 
And like I say, one point is better than nothing. And then it's my turn again. <laughs> and oh, let's see. So action three doesn't make any sense right now. That's going to add one tile to the outdoors and I have to take two. And neither of these is good for me. They're both terrible. <laughs> so I definitely don't want to do that. Action two is to draw two tiles, take one and place the other in the outdoors. So it's basically just drawing two. And position four, in this case, action four is almost identical to me. So what I want to do is go to position two, because this is actually, again, going to be worth two points at the end of the game. So we are going to draw two tiles. I basically need these two tiles to work for me. And this is where it gets interesting because early in the game, I could basically, I was like, yeah, I could use a leaf here. I could put this here. That's fine. Now I'm like, no, I need yellow and green tiles, preferably a yellow animal and a green almost anything. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to draw one at a time. Okay. It's not exactly what I want, but I'm okay with that. But just to be safe I, and follow the rules, Draw two. Ooh, it's a purple. Okay. So I'm getting some of those lovely uh, zero tokens or goose eggs or empty tokens, whatever we want to call them. I'm getting some zero pointers. However, I basically have to choose between one of these. And this shell is another. Look at that artwork. It's just so nice. And then this one, too. I'm not as thrilled about it because it, I don't need it for my cabinet, but it's still nice. So I definitely want to take this one. It's not perfect, but I still get to complete that. And then it really, do any of these have, none of them have crowns. So if one of them had a crown, I would at least be like, all right, I can, I can grab that. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Yes, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to take this bottle. Why, you may ask? It's going in an animal row. And yes, it's not an animal, but if you look closely... <laughs> That looks like a crow or a raven to me. So I'm going to say it's still going to be worth nothing to me, but at least I can pretend. <laughs> so let's make sure we score all that real quickly. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this column, I have all green. So once again, that's four points. But don't get too excited. This column, I would either have to have everything the same or everything different. So, you know, a, a nice, a connoisseur of art would be like, I'm going to start looking at the top and yellow, yellow, beautiful yellow, purple. <sighs> what are you doing? That's zero. All right, moving on. <laughs> the other hilariousness is that both of these rows are also worth nothing because I risked a lot. And why, you may ask? Once again, we're not looking at colors going across. We're looking at object types. So I have shell, shell, bottle. That's two bottles. No, or two shells. I don't know. It's two. <laughs> and then on the bottom, I have animal, animal, bottle. So nothing there. This is, once again, one of those other reasons why you'd be like, well, couldn't I just swap some? Nope. Once they're in the cabinet, that is it. Um, technically, the rival goes again. So let's just... We'll let them enjoy. <laughs> they would be in position three, and they would discard all animals, and there are none. So we are now at end game scoring. What do we do with that? We add up everything. And I just want to make sure that I get this correct, because the last time I played, I had a rule book closer than this. <laughs> um, I always just like going through in a rule book, and again, rule book. So it's a tiny size rule book um, for anybody curious. But yes, we, I like following along and making sure I don't. And also, I gave all the credits out earlier, and I forgot to mention, the solo play here is by Keith Mateka. I love all of his solo modes. You may know him from Thunderworks and Role Player. I know him from Herbaceous, which I play nonstop like a <laughs> crazy person already. So let's just make sure that we follow all of the scoring. So earned point tokens that we got. 
I do want to just remember, I usually, no, we can leave it. It's fine. So what did I get? I got four and four, eight, 11, 12. This is a bad cabinet. <laughs> Curiosity card. So that'll be 13 from earning this one right here. Special action tiles. I did keep one. So we're up to 14. It's 14 so far. Wonder cards. Any leaves. So I'm at 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 we're at. And then we're looking for crowns. 19, 20. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Then we didn't count these. So that's 26. And then I'm here. So that's two. That is 28. No, that does not, no. <laughs> if we compare on our kind of our, our nice scoring tier table here, 28 points makes me a trinket taker. Is that a joke? Trick taker? I'm a trinket taker. <laughs> At least I wasn't a clumsy collector. Um, but I would love to be that relic fanatic there with 46 or more points. Clearly, lots of work to do. But we have time. We'll take one minor interlude here for another real whatnot moment. This I have to semi take apart to show you the, the fun with it. This has always been around. It's a little teapot and this comes off. So I'm going to just take that off because it kind of slides around with this lovely little chimney, but I don't want to break it. So get that off to the side. If you want to have a nice little house, you can show this side or if you're in the mood for something a little different, we go to this side, which is so different, but we can read there. It's a little post office. So I don't know where this came from. I don't know who made it or where we bought it. It has just been something that has always been around. I think I may have stolen it from my parents at one point because that's what you do when you want random whatnots. <laughs> so that is just on display around my house. It's very random. Um, if we want to go for another one, my in-laws are actually moving. So we've been picking up a couple of things from them. And you know I love elephants. So we got this beautiful elephant sculpture here with a lot of elephants. <laughs> so now I have that on display, more elephant stuff. Oh, you know what? Okay. All right. It's clear. Why did I lose? There were no elephants in this game. There's elephant tiles, I promise. So let me get everything all cleared away and let's reset and see if I can do better than a 28 points. <laughs> I think I can, um, but it's an interesting game. Um, as I said, you are you kind of have it wide open at the start. You know, you start off with an empty cabinet and then you're just sort of working through and figuring out what works where, what do I want to do? Also, the box insert makes it really easy to set up and everything. You'll kind of have the tile bag going up here, but then there's spaces for all of the pawns. And again, there's two each because solo, you're going to be going two turns each round. Um, and also, same thing in a two-player game, but once you get up to three or four players, you're only going to need one pawn each. So let's remember where I was. My setup process. We're getting there. I have so many other random whatnots off to the side here. <laughs> I'm just thrilled that the lag seems to be gone from the camera. We definitely started off with a little uh, little issue there. We'll blame it on the heat again. <laughs> We're doing good. We have time. I hope everybody's enjoying themselves, laughing a little bit and learning. Again, if you have the game and you want to go and set it up right now for yourself, go for it. Um, feel free to comment, ask questions. I'm here to just chat <laughs> and talk and share some of my strategies, which may or may not be good. All right. Like my shuffling skills. What's the wonder card? It's leaves again. It's a very leafy day, I guess. So let's get all of these. Oops, we got to get this over here. And then we're almost all set up perfectly. Remember when playing the rival always goes first and third. That's how we start. Boop, boop, boop. 
Got those set up. Got my pile of tokens. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right, and then what curiosity cards do we have? Ooh, all right. Collect four crowns. That's worth an extra point. I think we had this one last turn. One row each of three different and three of the same object types. I think we had that. Ooh, that would have been nice last game. Same object type and different colors in a row. And again, a lot of these are just easier to see once we start playing. Five of the same color anywhere. I think we had that one show up last turn. And complete a row and column. So there, there's definitely some variety. These are the ones I'm not using, just so, just so you're aware that there's different goals to kind of add unique characteristics. You have your wonder card, and then the rival one always goes a little bit differently. So let's get back in and see what's going to show up. So we start with four tiles in the outdoors. We've got a yellow butterfly. You know what I want. A green shell with the crown, so that one's very nice. And a dig. I'm digging. I want the elephant. Okay. A yellow shell. <laughs> Could we get the elephant? Is it in there? I know it's in there. All right. It's not coming out right now. And then a purple gem. All righty. So that's what we start with. And let's go... I'm not going to call this a speed run of the whatnot cabinet because my cabinet would get messy very quickly. <laughs> so let's go. But first up, we get the rival. So they are going to take position three and they're going to discard all animals. No animals, so that's fine. All right. There's no leaves, so I know that that's not going to be worth anything for. Mm -mm, that same object. Okay. But do I want to go in position? No. I'm going to go position two. Or no, no, because I really want to have those. Oh, excuse me. Discard all animals. Sorry. What is an animal? I don't know what that is. This goes over here, and guess what? It's not my turn yet. The rival needs to put out a new one. All right, it puts out a bird with a crown. Ooh, those are two crowns. I like this, but I like the shells. Mm. I'm still going to go in position two here, which lets me draw two tiles. Bup, bup, bup. All right, so what do we get with our draw? have a red gem Ooh, and a yellow butterfly with a crown this time so i need to take one which is going to be the butterfly put these in the outdoors and i'm just checking if i need anything in corners nope so but why not butterfly it flies we'll get it up in the top left there and then i need to take one from the outdoors i'm going to take the bird because that helps with animals, but it also has a crown. So we'll get that up here. Nice. And then we go back to the turn order. It is the rival again. I'd prefer if it didn't touch the shells, but let's take a look. <laughs> so it's gonna go in position four. All right. And then it's discarding all purple objects. So this is gonna go away. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we get, again, don't forget, end of the rival turn, we get a new one out there. Ooh, a yellow bottle with a crown. Ooh, that's nice. But that's not quite what I wanted. Hmm. I'm going to live in the wild side. <laughs> We're going to go with position one, which lets me draw three tiles and keep two of them. So it's kind of a blind draw. I, I'm, I'm digging there. I want, I want my elephant. <laughs> and what do we get? Green bottle, a red gem, and a yellow butterfly. Oh, the animal tile is good, but what I was really going for, I was trying to get 
this immediately. And none of these have crowns. All right, it's all right though. We can we can work with this. Because then I could set that. That still gets me closer. Okay, I'm all right with this. I'm gonna put another butterfly up there. And then, I mean, we're definitely, I'm definitely not going for two columns of yellow. That, that's right out. <laughs> so it comes down to, do I wanna go for gems or bottles? Ooh, I wanna go for bottles. And the reason I'm going here is because if I look at the outdoors, there's a bottle with a crown out there. It's yellow, which I can use for one column. And I get to go first and second next round. So I'm gonna get rid of this gem. And we'll just say we're gonna have this side is gonna be different colors. And then we score. So I have animal, animal, animal. That's three of the same. That's three points. All right, this cabinet's looking good. <laughs> so now it's the end here. I have, don't think I completed any goals. I did not. Um, I am pretty much on track though to get crowned. So I wanna keep that out. Remember I'm turning over some of these. Yellow is getting close. My column could be getting close. I don't think I'm gonna get the same object type. No, I don't think that's happening three different and I don't think that's gonna happen either all right I think I think I can complete at least one or two of these so that's where I'm gonna go and then we're gonna slide everybody up and that's the turn order for next round all righty so I'm up first I'm pretty happy with what's out here because I can do a lot with some of these this is a bottle I can go there and I can get the yellow shell and that gets me closer. Okay, so I know I want to take two from the outdoors. So let's go with, oh, oh wait, is the end of round, excuse me, what am I doing? Get five points for round one because I ended up in positions one and two. So I'm taking a four and a one. All right, I'm gonna go to position three, which is gonna let me Put one tile in the outdoors. Watch as the elephant comes out now when I don't need it. <laughs> Ooh, it's a leaf, which is nice. All right, I can still set myself up though, potentially, to go again. All righty, so what do I really want here? I really want this yellow bottle, which I wanna get over here. Oh, and then do I want that shell or do I want that crown? I'm going to get the shell. No. Yeah, I'm going to go for that and hope that I can get one more crown and a yellow. All righty. Pretty good. We'll see. <laughs> um, I get to go again up here. Hmm. I can use that, all right. I think we're gonna go in position two, which lets me draw two tiles. Da, 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 and I'm gonna take one and the other one goes to the outdoors. See what I get. Let's hope for something useful. <laughs> all right, this is good. So I drew a blue shell with a crown on it. So that's an extra point right there. And this green gem, which I really don't need. So I'm gonna put the green gem out there. I'm gonna see how this works in a second here. Yep, I got it. I'm gonna put the blue one. Ooh. Hmm, mm -mm. No, we're gonna go for different colors and then try to get a yellow there. I got it, I got it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that there. How many do I have here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I gotta take one more. That's the nice part here too, is you can't really lose track of where you are because you have to take two tiles every turn. So I'm at seven and I was like, am I done yet? Nope, need to take another one. I had that planned. I would like this shell with a crown. So I'm gonna put that right here. And there's a couple things that I just completed here. So first off, I completed this row, which is shell, shell, shell. That's another three points. I am ruining my collection in that I can't get the four points for having all of the same uh, colors in these columns. 
but that's all right because I don't want to get those the blank tokens. I don't want them this turn. <laughs> and then with that turn, I actually have one, two, three, four, five crowns. So I get to take this curiosity card. And the only unfortunate thing is I didn't get to get the other ones. I was hoping for one more yellow, but we're okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I still want that. I'm good. I am good. Good. All right, moving on. <laughs> now the rival goes twice. So first up, they're going to try to go to position five. Fine by me. And they're going to discard all red objects, which will be this red gem out of there. And then the end of their turn, they add a new one out there for me to consider. A blue bottle. Mm, it doesn't really help me. And then they're going to go again. So they're going to take rival position one. Darn it. It's the only one I was <laughs> hoping they wouldn't get. And then they discard all blue objects. So that blue bottle that they just put out there, whoop, that's gone. <laughs> and once again, end of the rival turn. Don't forget, we're going to put out one more, which is a yellow shell. Yellow is nice. Not quite what I want, though. All right. End of this round. Both of these curiosity cards get flipped, and I can't get those. I get three points, though, because, again, I ended up on position two and three. So that's two and one point. So that's three. Slide everybody up. And we're into our last round. So rival goes first. And what are they doing? They're going in position two, discarding all cards with crowns. Ha! Huh. Nothing that time. But they do get to put out a new tile, which would be ideal if we could get something going here. What do we got? Ooh, a nice one. Let me just over here. If you remember again, this tile, if I pick that up, it clears out the outdoors and puts out four new ones. And I choose from those. So that is nice for me because I get to go twice in a row here. And I'm not seeing anything I really like. So let's see. I think my safest bet right now Right now, yeah. Right now, I'm going to go in position three. Add one tile to the outdoors. What will it be? <laughs> it is a green shell. Okay. So the issue I'm running into here, this yellow shell would be great here. But then I have all greens. And if you'll notice, I'm trying to get all different colors in these columns. So I'm not, not thinking that's a good option. I mean, I do like the yellow. I think that's what I'm going to do. So here's an interesting option here. If I take this tile first, that's going to wipe out everything in the outdoors. And then I draw four tiles and choose two from there. However, I could instead pick up this one and say, I'm putting this in my cabinet right now, and then choose to clear out the outdoors and choose from four new tiles, which I think might be the safest bet here. So I am going to say, yes, I would like another one of those beautiful shells to put here. And then I would like to use this to just sweep them on out of there. <laughs> so all of those go away, and I get four new tiles out there to choose from. I'm going to do one at a time again. Green gem. I don't want green. It's my husband's favorite color. This should be his game. Should have just made a green cabinet. Everything green. <laughs> There's that risky tile where I would gain one point, but I have to draw from the bag and immediately place it. So that's not really great. Oh, my goodness. A yellow shell <laughs> with a crown, though. Ooh, these are not that great of an option here. All right, you are. And a red leaf. Okay. So I'm happy with some of these. <laughs> um, so I just, I can, only can choose one again because I already put that shell out there. Do I want to take that shell and risk that? I'm liking this one. 
because I could put it here and I'm still in a pretty good space to get unique colors. But then I actually need a shell down here. Or I could play it a little bit safer and get this red leaf. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to play it a little bit safer. I'm going to put the red leaf down here. So that's going to complete that column and that's four different colors. So yes, it's not a perfect <laughs> collection, but I do get two points for that. So we're going to get that. Make sure that's up there. Mm. And then it's my turn again. <sighs> I don't like any of them. <laughs> None of these are good. Um, and let me see. And I just saw Anakin posted, I believe you can only take one. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> let me know um, because I should be all set here because I'm on this is my last pawn, so I should be going to one more action and going there. Did I take, because I did action three, right? Add one tile to the outdoors, then take two tiles from the outdoors. If I did it wrong, that's on me. Probably did. <laughs> so apologies if I did. <sighs> I'm just trying to think now, where can I go here to try to complete this? and with the, the best possible ending. Oh, I forgot to put my, excuse me, my four points for, did the token bag eat it? <laughs> Definitely got four points for all the yellows there. Hmm. <laughs> I need bottles and that, I mean, I could complete it with you, but you're not good, no. I believe what I want to do, even though it's, I'm gonna do a tile sweep sweep them out of there. So that's going to get rid of these three. And it gives me four to choose from. And I'm hoping, hoping that we can get something that works. So first up is a red leaf, which, okay, might be able to work with that. A yellow bottle that I could also work with. What do we got? A purple gem with a crown, that's looking good too. And a purple gem with no crown. <laughs> All righty. So I'm actually, we're in a pretty good place here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna definitely wanna take this yellow bottle to place it here because I'm gonna have all bottles and I'm still all unique colors here. It's just the, that one, no, that's fine. Right? Yes, okay. And then I'm gonna take this purple gem with the crown on it, put it here. And then let's see how I did in terms of completing these other rows and columns. So this column, I have blue, yellow, green, and purple. So all different. That's gonna be worth two points. These are all bottles, so that's three points. And then at the bottom, I have a shell, a gem, and a leaf. That's all different, so not the greatest, but it's still worth a point. I'll take it. <laughs> and then technically, the rival goes. Let's just see what they would have done they would have gone into position one and discarded all special tiles, which there are none. And just to do it correctly so I don't forget, <laughs> they would technically put out a tile, which is a lovely bluebird. All right, we are now at end game scoring and I lost my rule book again. Oh, it blends. <laughs> I've done this so many times, I'll just add it. I had it sort of laying out like this so from afar, that rule book is just camouflaged. <laughs> All righty. Let's see if I can do better than Trinket Taker this time. So we'll add up everything, right? All right. So 
let's see, so we've got 2, 4, 8, 11, 14, 17, 18, 19, 23, 26, 27. All right, I'll count that last, 27 we're at. <laughs> Leaves, 27, 28, just one. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, one there, 35, which makes me this time, I'm moving up in the world. 35, I'm a collectible connoisseur. Right at the top, almost a knickknack ant, ant, antiquary, antiquary, a word I can't pronounce at this time in my life. <laughs> Maybe it's good that I was I stayed a collectible kind of sport. <laughs> but yes, that is the whatnot cabinet. It does play much quicker than this. I like kind of talking through it and everything. Um, but once you kind of get going, you can kind of see how it's just action, put out tiles and make sure and you know, add in your tiles to your cabinet. Um, once they're completed, I love taking pictures and just showing these off. Let's see if I can do this without knocking anything over but you know up close it's just they're just really nice collections the the tiles and the artwork all work so nicely together and you know if even if we get closer <laughs> just taking a look at everything they're all just it's really nice although i will say here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a uh, a tile bag dump out real quick just to see <laughs> just to see what other tiles are in here. And to prove, yes, there is an elephant in there. <laughs> if you know me, I have this thing I call stealthy elephants. I hide elephants in my board game photography. This one was true to form today where it was not showing up when I needed it to. We probably didn't see a few other ones. There's a purple cat. Um, I mean, there's this blue gem there are there's a lot so there are duplicate tiles but it's also not like you're you know it's not like there's five tiles there's i believe there's three of every type i think i counted this before um but there's just oh there's another where's that the same elephant i don't know <laughs> but yeah that's what that's what all the tiles look like and again you're just trying to complete a really nice cabinet um, I like this solo mode because, again, the rival does not take that much to operate. You're drawing a card, you're seeing which space it blocks, and then potentially interacting with the tiles that are in the outdoors. Um, and that's it. And then it's it's mostly you get to decide, what do I need? What is working for me? What tiles are definitely horrible? <laughs> because there are turns when you're going to be faced with those decisions that are really tough. I'm happy with how this cabinet turned out because I got points for every column and row. Um, it's not a perfect one. I don't know if I've gotten a perfect cabinet yet where you have, you know, fours across the top and threes across the side. It's difficult, but not impossible. And like I said, when you get everything to kind of match up and work, it's fun. It's exciting. I think I have my little moments of like, yes, I did it. <laughs> And then there's other games where you're basically looking at these tokens all over the place and saying, ah, it didn't work today. <laughs> but I know this took a while. Um, for me, the solo mode is probably in the 10 to 15 minute range, um, depending. There's not a ton of, you know, you're looking at typically four tiles around that much every turn. So it's not like you have to look at, you know, 10 or 20 options and say, does that fit there? Does that fit? There's multiple ways to score, again, with the different curiosity cards. So even if a tile might not be that great for you, you've got other ways to score. There's crowns, there's wonder cards, and just to prove that it's not all leaves, <laughs> there's one for each different type. Um, and I, I don't know if it was clear before, but let me just kind of grab a couple just to show this off. Um, these are two animal tiles, so you'll see the different banners. It has the animal type, the animal icon in there to make it easy to see, but also the banners are different shapes for different colors. So this is 
accessible and colorblind friendly if I bring out something else. I know it's a different type, but just to kind of show you how those banners are different shapes. Again, these are different object types. You can see the icons, but you can kind of see at the top, red has that slant at the bottom. Yellow is kind of rounded. Uh, green, you kind of have a, a point. Um, and then blue is a slant the other way. And I think those are, they should be pretty easy to, again, taking a look at them. Those are, should be pretty easy to tell apart. The artwork is nice. I love themes like this as I've been playing a bunch of other games now um, with my husband, uh, area control and things where you're destroying other things or you know killing other units and stuff. Not quite my style, but putting together a little whatnot cabinet, you know, it's it's a very nice, relaxing sort of game. I've played this multiplayer too, and people like it. It's it's quick. Um, the you know the decisions are there, but they're not. The, the dreaded analysis paralysis is not something that really comes up. Um, it's definitely, you have to think about what you're doing, uh, but you don't have to worry about doing too poorly because when you play solo, what's the worst thing that could happen? You can sit there and laugh at yourself for being called a clumsy collector. <laughs> and that's not the end of the world. Um, but I have definitely gone over our normal hour today. Uh, as you can tell, I love this game. It's very thinky. If you're familiar with the other Pencil First Games titles, this is sort of definitely a, a step up in complexity from Herbaceous. Um, it kind of falls, I think, between Herbaceous and Sunset Over Water. It's, you know, Sunset Over Water, that one you're kind of planning out your moves and you can actually kind of get blocked in. Um, and it's it's a lot... It's very thinky, which is not a bad thing, but I think with the Whatnot Cabinet, it has a little bit more of a relaxing feel to it for solo, at least for me. Um, these games are all fun for me though. I play them all solo. That's just kind of a, a personal take, if you will, on what the Whatnot Cabinet offers. But yeah, uh, that's the Whatnot Cabinet solo. Uh, I think we are, we should be, I should be wrapping this up rather than just rambling. <laughs> but I want to thank everybody who stopped by and watched. I hope this was fun. Uh, why don't we end with one more random whatnot from Jessica's collection. I'm trying to see what else I have here that actually has, I mean, <laughs> the number of bird whatnots, knickknacks I have, they're everywhere. <laughs> this I picked up when I bought my first house. I think that was some of my first decorations for it. Um, Tiny Ladybug, which I think I got for my 16th birthday. You might recognize that from Floriferous because Floriferous has a ladybug in it. So I like having that kind of hanging out with me. Um, other stuff. Picked this up again from the in-laws. There's a, a whole little collection of owls that come in. Uh, I don't know what, I think these are stone, I'm going to say, maybe polished stone or something. Um, there's a whole collection of these that we now have on our mantle that I think there's seven of them in different sizes, kind of just watching over now. Once again, you put a, any birds near me and I'll take them. And then, you know, you get the extremely random stuff like this. This, this is apparently from Texas and this is my husband's and I'm not quite sure I understand what's going on with it. I'll have to fix this leg, but it counts as a whatnot. And, and it's head moves. It is cool, I guess, you know? <laughs> we all have knickknacks and whatnots and little things. Um, but I think we'll, we'll stop there. Or I might go on and on and, you know, go on a tour of the house of <laughs> every possible whatnot. You can find a lot of different ones in this game again. There's all different types and it's just a very fun, relaxing game to play. Um, so again, thank you to everybody who stopped by and watched and commented. I hope this was fun. Uh, I do solo Sundays every last Sunday of each month. So the next one should be coming up in July. And I believe I'm doing the 100 Tory for that. You can find the Whatnot Cabinet at your friendly local game store and directly from Pencil First Games. And yeah, that is it for today. Thank you again and take care. Bye.